You had um, in the first quarter uh, basically inline profit, but you've raised your forecast for the full year. Is it the is it purely the T-Mobile uh, takeover of Sprint that makes you confident enough to do that? Look, the first thing is we had a great quarter, you know, on the on both sides of the Atlantic. Outstanding another quarter in the U.S. Um, uh, with super growth. And from there, the guidance increase is coming. But on the other side, you know, Germany is growing and Europe is growing as well um, on a profitability basis, but even on a revenue basis. So now 95 percent of our business at Deutsche Telekom are in triple A markets and they are all growing. So especially in light of today's news, it's clear how global Deutsche Telekom really is. Um, but how important is that U.S. slice of the business to you, your stake in T-Mobile? First, the environment in Europe is very competitive. Um, uh, we have significantly um, uh, more price pressure and the economies of scales are lower. Uh, the U.S. are getting more and more um, relevant for us um, going forward. Um, with this great uncarrier strategy, we're moving forward. And today already, let's say 50 percent of the profitability is in the U.S. And with the sprint, it is even going to increase. So so the, the number that always strikes me when I look at your U.S. business is the growth. 20 quarters in a go. row, adding more than a million customers. Can that continue? Is that sustainable? Look, we have the DNA of changing the new environment, how telecommunication is experienced by customers. And this is our DNA. That's how we are ticking. And that's what we are not going to change going forward. Um, so with new technology, with new areas which we are covering, with all the spectrum which we have bought last year for $8.1 billion, we are able to reach new customers. We have opened up 10,000 doors in the U.S. Uh, where customers you know, could experience us. And we have the highest customer satisfaction of all carriers. So it is not something which you could easily uh, uh, just copy. Look at IKEA, um, a, a successor in the furniture industry for ages. And I think we are building the same differentiation uh, with the Uncarrier proposition in the U.S. as well. And therefore, I'm very confident that um, the team in the U.S. with their aggressiveness is moving forward, even in the 5G environment. I have to ask about the M&A uh, situation. You know, this all, I started covering this company 20 years ago. Vodafone was buying Manus Man. You guys bought VoiceStream. You were expanding in Eastern Europe. Uh, there was a lot of M&A, and it kind of was subdued for a while. Now it seems to be kicking up again with Vodafone buying Liberty Global's assets in your home territory and in Eastern Europe and markets where you're active. How do you feel about that? Look, the first thing is, you know, you know my, my, my position on that one. I think this deal totally unacceptable. Uh, because, you know, there was a time where Deutsche Telekom was not allowed to sell their cable businesses in one piece. Would have created a much bigger price. It was sold in three pieces. And now all of these three pieces are coming together in one uh, under the roof of, uh, of, of Vodafone. Second, you know, we are building, let's say, the rural Germany with fiber infrastructure. Now, let's see where Vodafone is now going. Are they really willing to invest even into the rural areas? Have not, nothing seen in their business case today uh, on this subject. The media industry, you know, almost 60 percent of our TV market is monopolized by this cable operator in the future. Is this good for democracy? Is this good for the media companies in this society? So I question that. And there's a last thing. 25% of our households in Germany are housing associations. And there is no access for Deutsche Telekom. And my last point on the bitch is here. Is, look, we have a fully regulated Deutsche Telekom in the home market where, there, uh, where we are building the infrastructure for $5.7 billion on an annual basis. Vodafone is investing less, is non-regulated, and is claiming that they are um, on eye level with us in the future on their fiber or on their cable infrastructure. So something has to change in the regulatory environment because uh, if they are a giant in this environment as they're claiming today, what does that mean for the regulation? Um, and therefore, we are um, uh, asking now for more deregulation for Deutsche Telekom going forward. So and then we are fighting for a very fair competition for the interest of our customers. This is, let's say, what they're going to do in the future. So, so what, what are you specifically then going to do about this? Are you going to go to these regulators with your complaints? Are you going to ask to buy some of those assets? Because you are already purchasing some things from Liberty Global. Look, I think there's no M&A possibility for Deutsche Telekom in, there, in the home market where we're operating. 
um, that's that's for sure. But you know what I will do is um, to make sure that politicians, that the leaders, the authorities who are deciding on this deal, that they understand the Esther market situation, which is created by this transaction, and that I'm not asking for a Lex Telecom for something specific for our company. I'm only asking for a fair competition for a possibility that we are able to fight with the same weapons, with the same pricing, with the same network infrastructure uh, uh, investments as they are going to um, uh, be able to do so. Let me uh, finally ask you then about the merger that you're pursuing, that your T-Mobile unit is pursuing in the U.S. with Sprint. $26.5 billion acquisition. Um, regulators in the past have had an issue with this combination. Why do you think it'll go forward this time? Look, the first thing, the market has totally changed. Um, if you see um, that today all the cable costs um, from Comcast to Charter announcing uh, big mobile customer subscriptions, that they are going into a market which is having both a fixed and a mobile combination, this shows that the market is not just a pure mobile or a pure fixed line market, it's a converged market. The second one we see is that, you know, there is a need that uh, rural America is getting uh, um, um, a competitive, um, a very well um, uh, installed 5G infrastructure. So um, if the small player is going to be able to create this efficiency, we need scale. We need the capability to utilize this infrastructure. And our commitment is clearly to build a 5G infrastructure, not only for the big cities, but especially for rural America um, uh, on top of that. And the last thing um, is the competitiveness. Look, we are the two small players, and there is this big duopoly of AT&T and Verizon on the other side. And with the combination, we are even more in the position to attack their huge profit pool. We are expecting not increasing prices, but reduced prices. We are expecting an even higher competition because our uncarrier proposition, our DNA of competitiveness will be strengthened, will be uh, supercharged, as uh, our team in the U.S. is claiming. What, what kind of investment can you expect to make in the U.S.? Uh, how much can T-Mobile rely on the financing power of Deutsche Telekom behind that? Look, we have built um, um, a huge um, um, uh, bridge and a huge you know, um, uh, combination plan uh, for the upcoming years. There is an investment up to $15 billion, which is going just in the combination of these two um, uh, to entities, um, and um, we have huge investments uh, planned for the 5G rollout. There will be a three-year time where we are realizing 43 billion of synergies, which is strengthening the, um, these companies and giving new capability um, for the network going out. I think it's a very sound business plan if we would be uh, allowed to, uh, to, to merge. Um, and with this, uh, we even can compete then uh, with the two big players.